This presentation will address the focus question, how are priority issues for Australia's health identified? It will focus specifically on measuring health status, and it will focus specifically on the role of epidemiology, with a particular focus on the use of epidemiology to describe health status through answering the questions listed about what epidemiology can tell us, who uses the measures, and does epidemiology tell us everything about health status? Epidemiology is defined simply as the study of disease in groups or population through the collection of data and information to identify patterns and causes. And epidemiology is used by governments and health-related organisations to obtain a picture of the health status of a population. Also to identify the patterns of health and disease and also analyse how health services and facilities are being used. A great example of this is the Australia's Health Report, which is released every two years by the Australian Government through the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare. This particular document provides an overview or a snapshot of the health of the Australian population. It provides detailed statistical information about the degree with which certain diseases are affecting the population in Australia, for example. Uh, the biggest killer in Australia is cardiovascular disease, followed by cancer. Uh, so what it does is it provides the, the current up-to-date statistics, which tells us the mortality rate or the amount of people that are dying from particular diseases, uh, the incidence or the amount of new cases over a period of time. So it tells us this, this information, uh, and it allows governments and other departments to be able to use this information to direct their health policies and uh, basically work for better outcomes for the health uh, of the Australian population. So with this in mind, epidemiology considers the patterns of disease in terms of the prevalence, so the number of cases of disease in a population, the incidence, the number of new cases of disease occurring in a population, the distribution, which is the extent, and the apparent causes which link back to the determinants and indicators. In addition to that, observation and statistics help researchers and health authorities to describe and compare the patterns of health of groups, communities and populations. So for example, the data collected through the Australia's Health document provides a range of different types of statistics that help to compare Indigenous health with non-Indigenous health. It also allows uh, governments and other departments to identify the health needs of the population and allocate healthcare resources accordingly. So the statistics developed or collected allow the government to channel health resources uh, to address diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes. It also helps to evaluate health behaviour strategies uh, in a bid to control and prevent disease and also identify and promote behaviours that can improve the health status of the overall population. So epidemiology commonly uses statistics that are based on births, deaths, the disease incidence and prevalence, contact with healthcare providers, so the amount of people that actually go to the doctor or go to the hospital, this information is, uh, is collected and that can be used um, to inform healthcare, hospital use, injury incidents, work days lost and money spent on healthcare. Now the syllabus asks you to critique the use of epidemiology by considering the following questions. What can epidemiology tell us? Who uses these measures? And do the measures measure everything about health status? So it's important that epidemiology can tell us about mortality, infant mortality, morbidity, life expectancy, prevalence and incidence. Now these measures I'll talk a little bit more about in depth in the next presentation. But epidemiology can tell us the mortality or how many people are dying from a disease. The infant mortality or the amount of children in the first year of life that are dying. The morbidity or the, the level of disease in the community or population. The life expectancy, the, uh, the number of years that people are expected to live the prevalence of disease, that is the amount of people that are affected by a disease in the community, 
and the incidence, the amount of new cases of a disease over a period of time. So epidemiology can give us a snapshot of the health status of a population. That is, it can, it can provide information for governments, uh, government departments and so on about the health status of the population. It can also provide information about health trends, uh, areas of concern, health priorities, uh, the impact of risk factors such as smoking and alcohol use, the influence of key health determinants, the population groups that might be at risk, the level of access to health services, the degree to which the population is growing and ageing, and the impact of health promotion. Epidemiology can tell us information about the health issues that are of greatest concern to the population. And through this, the Commonwealth Government has identified nine national health priority areas. And these include cardiovascular disease, cancer, injury, mental health, diabetes, asthma, arthritis and musculoskeletal disorders, obesity and dementia. These are the nine health priority areas or the diseases that are impacting the population most. Epidemiology helps us or helps governments to identify these, um, these issues. Uh, obviously, if a disease is affecting a lot of people in the population, then the government will be able to uh, determine this through the epidemiology, through the data and statistics, and then able to allocate resources to try to stop these diseases or issues from affecting more people. So who uses these measures? As mentioned, governments, local, state and commonwealth and health departments use these measures to help direct their health promotion initiatives. The Roads and Maritime Services will use information or statistics around car crashes and injuries and fatalities on the road to help determine how they approach their safety and health promotion. The Australian Bureau of Statistics and the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare will collect a range of different types of data and use that to paint a picture of the health of the population. Non-government organisations such as the National Heart Foundation and the Cancer Council will use epidemiology to inform what they do. Universities, community groups and health professionals will all use epidemiology to inform their research or the issues that are of most concern to them. And internationally, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, and the World Health Organisation will use measures to compare populations around the world. Do they measure everything about health status? This question really relates to the limitations of epidemiology. Now, the, the answer to the question is no, these measures don't measure everything because there's a lot of things that can't be measured through epidemiology. And sometimes different subgroups of the population, like the Indigenous community and the non-Indigenous community, there are some things that just can't really be measured very well through epidemiology. So the differences or the social differences between Indigenous communities and non-Indigenous communities are not always easily measured. And also um, quality of life, it's difficult to measure that through the use of statistics and data. For example, a person may be affected by disability, but their quality of life, according to them, may still be quite high. So the number of people with disability versus the number of people with high level of quality of life with disability are two very different measures. And epidemiology doesn't always tap into this. And statistics tell us little, little about the degree and impact of an illness on a person's life. Furthermore, epidemiology cannot provide the whole health picture. Data on some areas, for example, such as mental health, are incomplete or non-existent, mainly because people don't always provide open and transparent information about their mental health. So this can make the statistics sometimes unreliable. Sometimes it can, epidemiology can fail to clearly explain why the health inequities persist. It might identify the health inequities but not explain why they exist, which is really important. And it may not uh, comprehensively account for the health determinants, the social, the economic, the environmental and the cultural factors that might shape health. Thank you very much for listening and please tune in for uh, the videos to come. Thank you.